Well, Phil, first of all, how would you reflect on the January transfer window overall? Um, the one word that springs to mind is it was fairly quiet. We didn't have uh, we didn't have any offers for any of our players. Nobody called. I think everyone knew, you know, where we were in the league. You know, we, we weren't going to uh, disrupt our progress. We wouldn't entertain those offers. We want to keep the squad together, and I think all the players are happy here as well. I, no, nobody's uh, nobody's wanting to move. I don't think at the minute. So. So, which is a real positive sign. I think we can uh, we're going to progress on here. And what were your initial aims for the window? And how close did you get to achieving them finally? Uh, main thing: keep the squad together as is. That was achieved, bar a few uh, fringe cases. Um, second thing was to strengthen in key areas where we could. I think we did that with Shandon. We did that with Tarik. Um, we potentially would have liked to look at how we um, how we support the strikers, how we support Ali as well. Uh, but incredibly difficult in January. This January to um, to to buy a striker, we made we made some offers, we had some conversations, but it was a flat no nearly nearly everywhere you look. So but there you go. That's it. The players are more than good enough. Oli will uh, you know get the support he needs, and um, yeah, we'll we'll be okay. Did the plans for the windows change as the season progressed, considering how well the team's done in recent months? So in past Januarys, we've been more mid table. And that's meant that we've looked more favourably at can we, you know, can, should we sell a player? We have more offers. Is it right for the player to move on as well? Um, but obviously, this window, you know, as, as the season's progressed and we've moved you know, closer and closer to the top of the table, you know, it, it does change your thinking. You think, right, well, we, we're gonna we're gonna have a, you know, we're gonna at least keep the squad together and try and strengthen rather than um, look towards more next season and developing players for that purpose. Did the forest result change anything in terms of the, the last few days of the window at all? No. Was there any consideration of Emiliano staying out alone or was the planning to bring him back alongside the new faces? So the contract was initially structured to bring him back in January when we could have a look at this. Now, of course, between him going on loan and and January, we had some significant injuries, uh, Sergi, of course, and, and Corellis. Uh, so we needed more offensive threat. Halil coming in, he obviously added to that as well as well so um so yeah when he when he came back he'd been playing a lot of minutes he looks sharp he looks good um, and he can definitely make a big contribution so you know it was a fairly easy decision to say look we're, we're looking to get promoted and um, and he's i think he's really happy to be here and try and help us of course marcus and ellery have both come back from loans they'll be looking to recover from injuries but both would have had valuable experiences and a lot to learn so Marcus, yeah, I mean, he did amazingly well. Um, it's a shame what happened to him with the injury. And um, we'll try and get it back as quickly as possible. The key thing we said to him at the start of the season was, you'll get minutes here, but not a huge number. Go and play 90 minutes every week. And he took the opportunity. And uh, it's such a shame that his season's been, uh, uh, well, hopefully not cut short completely, but he'll be uh, he'll be out for a period. Um, with Ellery, same, same thing. He stage of his career, regular minutes. Uh, Danish uh, second team in Denmark so you know a position for him which he can build and he's had an injury as well which meant that both those clubs chose, chose to send those players back which is fair enough and uh, we'll look to rehab them and um, and kick on as soon as possible and Mads Beck Sorensen of course went on loads at AFC Wimbledon is that seen as a really good move for him in terms of getting regular first team football yeah same as Marcus so we, we've got we are building a good relationship with Wimbledon we're getting to know those guys well I think when you have a good loan it encourages everyone to go for you know another loan Um key thing for me is there's a club there who look at Brentford players and think these players can help us and they want to play them that's the most important thing it's not big loan fees or you know any of that it's not looking too much at league position of Wimbledon it's looking at league one regular minutes and um, and Mads has had a couple of games and all reports so far as he's done very well do we have any offers for any players that ended up not leaving the club no like I said before it's um it, it was a very quiet window in that respect I think it was a quiet window all over the place so in some ways that wasn't a surprise and I think most people I hope would have uh, would have been looking at Brentford thinking you know they'll want to keep that team together for sure and I'm um, sure our players as well were thinking well we've got a real opportunity to, uh, to achieve here so we don't want to go anywhere either. And Tom Field has joined Dundee FC does that represent a positive move for him he's been a player that's been around the club for a long time now? Yeah I mean he's been here a long time and uh, and I had a few loans now which haven't always worked out for him and the most important thing was when he had that opportunity to to get a, a, a new move and get some minutes I called him and said it's a fantastic opportunity you've got to take this opportunity uh, off you go and he was up for it and uh, and good luck to him. 
And there's been some fresh movement in terms of the B team as well. Paris Magoma, Aaron Presley coming in. And also Canise Carroll has moved on to Steve Nutri. Of course, we wish him well. Yes, Canise didn't have the best uh, the best um, loan in Carlisle. So he needed another another fresh fresh opportunity. So happy to get that one done for him. Uh, Paris, Paris is, a, um, Paris is an interesting one. Very talented player. Uh, perhaps couldn't see the pathway at Tottenham. Uh, perhaps they also couldn't see the pathway for him, so we were able to, to to bring him here. He was as keen to come here as we were to bring him here, which is a big positive sign. Uh, I hope he can do that because I think it's another great advert for the B team, another great statement of what we can do for players and um, and the fact that players are looking to come from Tottenham and come to our B team to progress is a is a, a good sign. Um, with Aaron, um, similar thing. We think he's got an opportunity to come now, develop, work hard on his game. Uh, and develop with us and of course the first target for him is can he get in our first team training group can he develop as a player can he progress towards getting uh, getting his debut for our first team and finally Josh Clark will be leaving the club everybody of course wishes him well yeah like Tom Field a slightly different case Tom moved to a club Josh we decided wasn't going to get the minutes that he needed right now having come back from injury the first half of the season so the best case for for him was to um, to let him uh, to to release him before the end of the window, which meant that he can go and find a club tomorrow and sign for another club uh, trial train and um, and find a new pathway for himself. So both Tom and Josh, big thanks from Brentford and uh, good luck for the rest of the careers.